SRB separation standing by for a performance call from Mission Control. Dan Rather, CBS News in New York. Looks like all is well as the uh, shuttle gets Discovery, up performance, and away. Nominal. Roger, Discovery, nominal, performance, nominal. nominal. Peter Van Sant uh, uh, and Dave Hilmer at Kennedy uh, Space Center. On the first stage, uh, with the solid uh, rocket booster no glitches that anybody could see. Uh, Everything looks terrific. Up and running at it looks, uh, it looks tremendous. Of course, we're waiting cell, for uh, the main engine cutoff, which Altitude, comes about uh, uh, 8 minutes, 32 seconds into the flight. It's at that point that they are they are in orbit, and, and we usually still have a, a bit of anticipation until we get uh, that cutoff. Uh, I still have a, uh, a chill that runs up my spine every time I hear uh, go for go for mean uh, th throttle up, which was the last command to uh, the shuttle Challenger. And every time I hear that, I still hold my breath. Uh, what were your impressions of the launch? Uh, things seem to be going well. Looks picture perfect from here, uh, Peter. Uh, of course, there's a lot that goes on that we can't see or, or tell, but uh, there's uh, apparently no problems. Looks okay. great. Twelve, eleven. Uh, Dave Hilmer's uh, the mission. We have a go for main engine start core of the mission Six, is to deliver that $100 million dollar satellite start. into orbit. Uh, tell us a bit about that satellite and uh, why this is the first, let me say, operational mission since the space shuttle has uh, started to fly again. We've had two previous space shuttle flights, but both of those were basically just to check out the system and primarily to make sure that we could get the shuttle up and down again. This time there's uh, major work to be done out there. Tell us a bit about what that work is. Well, Dan, actually, this is the same satellite that uh, we deployed on STS-26 uh, back in September. Uh, it's very much a, uh, it's a very similar mission. Uh, we deployed one of these tracking and data relay satellites. Uh, we put a second one up, and this will be the third one that we have in orbit, and we'll replace an ailing satellite that we uh, put up that was very similar to this back in 1983. It will increase the communications with mission control, uh, put a more reliable satellite up, and it will also be used by a number of other government and civilian agencies. It, uh, it actually is, is folded up in the payload bay, and it lies down at uh, uh, horizontal in the payload bay. When, once it gets on orbit, then all these antennas and solar panels that you see will open up and uh, be exposed to the sun and communicate with the ground. And it's, it's an, an enormous satellite. It's 57 feet from tip to tip with these solar panels and about 42 feet uh, wide. It's a tremendous uh, uh, satellite, which they say will dramatically improve communication between uh, space and Earth. On your typical 90-minute orbit, they'll be able to talk to the shuttle crew now for uh, about 80 of those minutes. So it'll be just uh, about 10 minutes where they're in the dark, uh, and that's a big improvement over what they do today. They'll also be able to shut down all these ground stations around the world and save about $30 million a year once these satellites uh, get up and get uh, operating. Dave Hilmers, as we watch the replay again of the shuttle's uh, apparently perfect launch, what goes through the astronaut's mind when the shuttle reaches about this stage? You have this tremendous power underneath you and the tremendous challenge ahead. Well, at this point in, in first stage, as we call it, when you're on the solid rocket bo boosters, you're really kind of along for the ride. Uh, it turned out on our flight on STS-26 that uh, we had an alarm that went off about 15 seconds after liftoff, and that certainly got our attention. Uh, I remember trying to grab for my checklist and, and getting it at some effort. Uh, you're shaking around quite a bit. There's a tremendous roar in your in your uh, helmet, and uh, you're doing your best to, to re re uh, revert back to your we have main many thousands start. of hours of training Three, in which you automatically two, went to a checklist one. and did the procedure. SRB so we'll ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of STS-29 as Discovery clears the tower. This again, a replay of uh, the uh, liftoff. For those of you who may have joined us late, or for those of you who, like so many of us here, really like to see it again and again, that no matter how many times you've seen it, keeping in mind from a historical standpoint that we're still just on the very front edge of the exploration of space, that no matter how many times you see it, uh, it does, as Peter Van Sant says, uh, give you a tingle. Now, this is uh, downrange some uh, 500 miles now. We're uh, 
seven plus minutes from liftoff and all is well with this launch of the uh, space shuttle. Discovery originally was set for a liftoff uh, February 18th in what NASA had hoped to be a very active year, 1989, uh, for the shuttle. But uh, the launch has been postponed four times by the need to replace faulty or suspect engine parts. Here again, the liftoff. Shuttle chief Richard Truly said the success of this mission is, and I quote him now, absolutely vital to NASA's continued recovery from the Challenger accident and the agency's move towards safe, routine, once a month shuttle, uh, once a month shuttle launches by 1992. Reminding that the whole idea of the space shuttle was to make it kind of a space truck, which could routinely go up and down, in and out of space. And that's what was the shuttle was developing into until the tragic explosion of Challenger, and who can forget it? And each time the shuttle goes up now, it is, in effect, a kind of living monument to those brave uh, astronauts who were in the Challenger when it exploded. NASA's goal in 1989 is to get the shuttle back to the point where it makes routine flights in and out of space. Following this flight, if it's successful, as we all pray that it is, the 1989 shuttle schedule lists the launch of the Magellan probe to Venus in April, then some secret defense department payloads in July and August, then the Galileo mission to Jupiter in October, a communication satellite in November, and the space telescope to be launched in December. What you're seeing is a replay of the uh, solid rocket boosters dropping away from the shuttle as it went up on its successful uh, launch. We mentioned that if all goes according to schedule, that the space telescope will be uh, launched aboard shuttle in December. And keep in mind that that space telescope uh, will afford man the opportunity to see more of the cosmos than has ever been seen before in history. Uh, that's where the shuttle program is headed. Uh, or in, in December, if all goes uh, as we hope it does, that this third launch of the space uh, shuttle since the Challenger disaster today, uh, up and away and apparently successful, those are among the things we can look forward to. The Magellan probe uh, to Venus in April, the Galileo mission to Jupiter in October, and the launching of the uh, space telescope uh, in December. Michael Collins, uh, review for us very quickly. The probe to Venus will be designed to accomplish what? Well, to learn about the... Uh the next planet in closer to the sun. It's a, an extraordinarily uh, hot planet, a planet with an extraordinary dense atmosphere and uh, a greenhouse effect that is thousands of times as powerful as the greenhouse effect uh, here on Earth. And it'd be fascinating to discover uh, some of the differences and some of the similarities between the evolution of a planet like Venus and our own Earth. And uh, Dave Hilmers, uh, down in Florida, the Galileo mission to Jupiter in October will be designed to accomplish primarily what? Well, again, we're going to investigate uh, the planet of Jupiter. We'll have two parts to it. There'll be an orbiter, which actually orbits around the, uh, the planet, and a probe, which will go down to the surface. We don't really know what the composition of that sur surface is, and the probe will probably not make it all the way down because of the high pressures involved. But uh, we hope to find out much more about that mysterious planet. Probes to Venus and to Jupiter coming up later this year if all goes well. Peter Van Sant, uh, let's review what's happening aboard this space shuttle mission. Uh, Discovery uh, up there, apparently all going well. Its main mission to deliver that $100 million satellite into orbit. What's happening right now? We have had uh, main engine uh, cutoff, which means uh, things are going extremely well. Uh, the shuttle is heading up towards its uh, orbit of 184 uh, miles above the equator, uh, which is very good to launch this satellite in about uh, six hours from now. You mentioned the Hubble telescope, Dan, uh, which is uh, literally going to reveal some of the secrets of the universe once they get it into space. It has been sitting in a warehouse for years uh, the Challenger uh, uh, accident uh, set that project back, but they needed to get the TDRS satellite up so it could process the, the data and send it back down to Earth. So this mission is, is very critical uh, in terms of the Hubble telescope. This, this mission is also, I want to uh, mention, uh, a confidence builder for NASA. They've had uh, real uh, reliability problems and, and concerns that way. And so this is a real confidence builder for them that they've managed to get uh, Discovery up and, and Atlantis comes uh, next month. And 
to, so we haven't confused you, we're talking about some of the flights to come later in the year, provided uh, everything goes well. The exploration around Venus, the exploration around Jupiter, and then that uh, tremendous space telescope to be launched in December. So let's uh, hope and pray that all of this Discovery mission goes well. Once again, let's take a look and listen to today's launch on replay. Six, five, we have main engine start. Three, two, one. SRB ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of STS-29 as Discovery clears the tower. Uh, Roger roll, Discovery. Special Control Houston. Good roll program confirmed. And so, Shuttle Discovery's crew of five leave behind the fog and the wind way down below to begin what we hope will be their five days in space up above, the first space shuttle flight of 1989. We will, of course, keep you up to date as the mission goes along. We'll have full coverage tonight on the CBS Evening News. For now, with Peter Van Sant, Dan Rather, we'll see you later. Rise. We have main engine start. Three, two, one. SRB ignition and liftoff. Lift off of STS-29 and Discovery. This is CBS.